Hey everyone, it's Teresa. Welcome to my studio. Today we are talking watercolor pencils. So now these tip tips and techniques are specifically for Bible journaling, but they can also be used in art journaling and any other art project. Okay, so what you're going to need is obviously watercolor pencils. Um, let's just have a quick look at watercolor pencils. So basically what is it? It is a pencil, meaning it has a lead. It's encased in wood. You can draw with it, you can color with it, but what makes this different to normal coloring pencils is you can take a brush with water, activate the pigment, and then have something similar to watercolor paint. Okay, so now not all watercolor pencils are created equal. This is the Albrecht Dürer, Faber-Castell Albrecht Dürer, and this is top of the line. You don't need this, it's an expensive set, but you what i love about these is the pigment it's really pigmented if you buy a really cheap and nasty set you're gonna get a lot of binder in that lead and a lot less pigment and that's how they bring the price down and that's just going to frustrate you so the best entry-level set that i would suggest is the fabric Estel in the red packaging that is their school line or their like entry-level line um in the red packaging all right so that would be the it's a really good pigment i really love that pigment i actually have a set of those and i have played with them before this one is just so much more pigmented so um buy what you can afford but i would suggest don't go for the cheapest nastiest watercolor pencils because you're going to get a lot of binder not a lot of pigment the colors are not going to be very vibrant and you're going to get frustrated okay so let's get into uh, the tip and techniques but let's just quickly look at what else you need okay so a water brush this one with water in the little barrel or you can just use normal stock standard brushes um and then for tracing, if you want to do tracing and then color in, you're going to need a, a HB pencil or a and a micron pen because the microns are um, permanent. Okay, so that's it for supplies and obviously water. So if you're going to use your water brush, the water is going to be in the barrel. If you're going to use brushes like these, you will need something to hold your water. For watercolor pencils, I suggest having a container. It can be a saucer with a little bit of a sponge. It can be a kitchen sponge. This one I bought specifically for watercolor pencils, and I'm going to show you how this works. Let's get going. In this video, I am going to cover two techniques. So I'm going to cover tracing, how to trace, because this is a uh, tracing of a printable that I did, and this is colored in with watercolor pencils. Then here is another one that is a tracing that I did that's traced from a printable and then colored in with watercolor pencils. And this is just drawing with watercolor pencils. Okay, I'll quickly cover a little bit of that too. I literally just drew that, made a little background and all of this was done with watercolor pencils. So it's a very, very versatile um, product it's got so many ways that you can use it and in the, this video and a few following videos i am going to cover quite a few techniques all right so this is the picture that i'm going to color in but i quickly first want to show you how to trace so this is my 100 days of bible promises book i want to trace this little moth into this side here. So the easiest way to trace is you're gonna need an HB pencil. This is actually an 8B, I couldn't find my HB. Any of the B pencils, HB or B pencils. And then I have my Micron pen. All right, so easiest way is turn your paper around. So this is part of a printable. I'm gonna turn it around. I can see where the picture is. So I'm gonna just mark it off. And then I'm going to use the side of this pencil and I'm going to add graphite. So this is just using a pencil. You don't need tracing paper or graphite paper or anything like that. You're creating your own graphite paper by using just a graphite pencil on the back of your picture. Now I'm going to place my picture where I want it. And then I'm going to trace it. Now the best pen to use for tracing is a ballpoint pen. If you don't have a ballpoint pen, just use um, a blunt pencil. So here is a fairly blunt pencil. 
The reason why you won't use this is you don't want to damage the felt tip, the felt tip, and then the reason why um, a ballpoint pen would be nice because it can't push through the paper, it can't damage the paper. And now I am just following the lines. You don't have to follow them exactly. You just need to get, so you can see what's happening. All right. Don't try and get them perfect. You can do scribbly lines like this. It looks more painterly um, if you use scribbly lines. Okay. And then, We'll do his two eyes, we'll do those, and then the body. Okay, there is it traced. Okay, now I'm going to take my micron pen and I'm going to draw over that. Now, when the pen is dry, you can go and erase the graphite. To test if the pen is dry, take your hand like this, press it on, you lift it up, and if there's any ink transferred, then you just wait a little bit more. The microns dry very quickly, and now you can go in with an eraser, and you can erase the graphite. And then if you come close to the edge of your paper, you're going to go in one direction, lift, lift, so that you don't scrunch up your paper. And there is a picture I can now color in with my watercolor pencils. Okay, back to this picture. This is a picture that's actually printed in my Bible. I have the... Uh, creative journaling bible so it does have pictures already in the bible let's quickly look at a few techniques of how to apply the color and how to activate the pigment um i'm going to just work on this uh tree over here let's talk about what you're looking for color wise you're looking for a light and a dark so i have a light brown and a dark brown and then with your greens you only need a light green and a dark green but I have plenty of greens in my set so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually play around with um, different there we go different types of green all right now with, like with most coloring you will there's this few ways first you can go and color in the whole picture adding your lights and shadows and then activate it I find that a little bit hard sometimes to actually keep the light areas light and the dark areas dark. So what I do uh, normally is I first go in with my light colors, activate them, dry them, and then do my dark colors. So if you look at this tree here, everywhere where they've drawn it quite dark is obviously where your shadows are. Just think of it this way. If, just imagine sun on this side. So everything that the sun will touch the tips here will be light, the side of the tree will be light, everything that's in the shadow side, bottom of the tree branches, bottom of the uh, leaves, that'll be darker. That gives you that 3D look. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with my light brown first and just add some color. Now, you can see I'm not doing this um, very precisely because it is watercolor pencils you're going to move the pigment around where you need it um it's not like when you're coloring when you have to like make sure that that area is done completely it's okay if there's white spaces in between because you're not going to cover that 
when you activate that pigment. So this is my water brush. It gives water on demand. Um, you can see there. So basically all it is is a um, container with water. There's a little valve here and it brings the water through to the bristles here. Can you do it with these? Yes, and I'm gonna show you why um, having the sponge helps. So first I'm gonna show you how to work with your water brush. Okay, you need another piece of paper where you can just wipe this on. So now I'm just going and I am activating my light brown. It's very yellowy. That's fine, it's the one I have on my set, so I'm not gonna moan about it. It's lighter than the other one. Okay, then that needs to dry. I'm gonna speed up the drying process. You saw that while I was drying this, I was actually holding the paper taut. That keeps it from wrinkling too much. Yes, your fingers are going to get in the way of the heat a little bit. Just work what is bearable for you. Um, I like working this way. Then you don't get as much scrunching of the paper because of the wetness. I don't mind crinkly pages. It's still a little bit crinkly, but that just eases out some of the uh, very like crinkly bits. So now I have light down. Now I'm going with my dark brown and I'm gonna use a lot less of this because it's my shadow. Even these areas that they're already dark, I'm just adding color to them. Even though it doesn't look like there's anything going on there, it just, it adds color. So, I'm using the picture as a guide. Wherever they drew shadows, I am going to add my brown. Can you see that I added in like just little bursts of little lines? I'm not doing a lot. Um, the more pigment you add, the more, the darker it will become. So what I'm doing now, this is important now. You need to blend from your light area into your dark area. If you start in the dark area and you blend into the light area, you're going to cover the light area with your dark color. So I'm going to start here in the light area and then move my brush into the darker area, activating that color. And if there's too much color on my brush, I'm just going to wipe it off a little bit. And here where it's just in the dark areas, I'm just flowing over the dark, adding that color. And every time I've picked up color, I'm just wiping my brush because otherwise I'm going to move a lot of this dark color into the lighter area. Wipe. Wipe. Okay, and now I want to add a little bit more drama in this dark area here. There's a few ways you can do that. You can wait till it's dry again or speed up the drying process. Go in with your pencil again and reactivate it again. Or you can take your pencil, take your brush, gently touch on the tip. So you're wetting that pigment. So you're picking up pigment with the brush. And now I'm going to accentuate these lines. Okay. Just makes that shadow area look a lot darker. The small areas that I want to go into. I just pick it up like this. Add a little bit more brown on top of this black so that it actually looks brown and not black. Very gently in these very dark areas because now I'm picking up concentrated pigment so it's going to be very dark. Okay, wipe my brush. 
if I had a medium brown, I would go in and blend in between those two colors. But I don't have a medium brown. So while that is still slightly wet, I'm going to go in with my very light brown. And I'm just going to be blending here where these very dark and the light meet. Just to give you that medium color. Okay, depending on what, how small the area is you're working in, you might need to be like working with the very, very tip of your brush or if it's a big area like we're going to work in the leaves just now, um, you don't have to be that precise. So let's start on the leaves. I am just going to add a lot of green. This is my light green into the leaves. So now it was drawn very like uh, scribbly, so I'm going to color it that way. I'm not going to be very precise with my color and make like actual leaves. I'm just going to add the idea of the green leaves in here. So that is my light green. So let me show you how we're going to work with a normal brush and this. So what this is, is just a sponge. Like I said, it could be a kitchen sponge in a saucer. But this gets sold like this for watercolor pencils. And add water into that. Not too much. You just want the sponge damp. Okay, so now when I go with my brush... I might need a thinner one. If I go with my brush into this, it wets the brush, but the brush is more damp than wet. If I push this, there's not going to be water coming out of this. If I dunked this into a container with water, this was going to be saturated with water. And if you push on the bristles, there was going to be droplets of water dripping off. That is going to be too much water for your watercolor pencils. You're going to create a very big wash and if that's what you were going for all good but if you're working inside a picture and you just want to activate the pigment it's best to then work from a, a wet damp sponge so that your brush is damp and not wet you can see there's no water droplets coming out of that brush okay so making my brush nice and damp and now I can go and activate this color and you can see that it's not too much moisture or water for the pigment. I can activate the pigment without it running everywhere. That's the problem. If you have too much water, your pigment's going to start running everywhere. Okay, so there it go. That was the light. That's how easy that was. Let's speed up the drying process. Again, I'm holding my paper taut. Mind your fingers. This is now nice and dry. And can you see how lovely that looks? Let me just... Can you see it's not perfectly colored? It's very stripy, but it adds to the aesthetic of the picture. Okay. So that was our um, light green. So now I'm going to go and move to a medium green. If you don't have the medium green, you only have a dark and a light green, then you do exactly what you did with the the stem here but i'm going to show you if you have more choice of color in your set we're going to go light medium dark so now i'm going in with my medium green and i'm going to add it to i'm following the lines that's already here and i'm just adding that you see i'm just keeping to this almost like medium where the half of the shadow would be like this bottom part would obviously be a lot darker because that's in the shadow so you can see I'm not being very precise. I'm just like making lines and that's all you need. You just need to put pigment down that you can activate. Okay, then I'm going to take this brush again into my onto my sponge. Okay, again, you push on it. You can see there's no water droplets coming out, so it's not too wet. And now if you press down like this and not um, wipe, you actually form those little puddles that you get with watercolor paints where you have like little darker puddles of color um, forming which works beautifully for leaves so you saw I didn't go like this can you see these little 
puddles of water forming and that also the, that area is a little bit darker now than the area next to it so it also gives you that uh, light and light and shade so I'm going to dry that it dries very quickly when you do pick up the page because now the heat can travel through the paper and it's not getting um, stuck on the back of the paper so always when heating something if you lift it up from the surface the heat can travel right through which dries quicker so now i'm going to go in with my dark green what's this going to be my dark green yeah this is going to be my dark green and i'm going here to the bottom areas now i'm pressing a little bit harder too and that is where if you have a pencil that is more binder than pigment if you press too hard you can actually damage the paper but this is such a soft pigmented pencil that i'm just getting pigment on the paper and it's not damaging my paper and the harder you press the more pigment you get the more pigment on the page the more color the vi and also the more vibrant the color so again um in my sponge and again that little dabbing motion Acted. This doesn't work for all the pictures, but it works really well for leaves. Especially in this picture. Okay, it's dry. Now I can go back with um, this technique. Pick up pigment with your brush. I don't have, and this one doesn't have a nice tip, so I don't have a small brush with a nice tip, so that's why I'm back using this one. But it works just as well with a normal brush and, and this. And I'm just adding, I'm adding dots here, which will look like leaves, essentially. the shadow side of leaves. Okay, and I'm gonna do the exact same technique. I'm just wiping my brush. I'm gonna do the exact same technique with my light green. But more in this medium meat light green area. I'm just adding a little bit more water to some of those areas because they were just a little bit too dark. This is just play. Play till you are happy with the picture. There's no right or wrong about it. It's literally just play till you are happy with the picture. There's this tree. I'm not going to do the whole picture because I do want to show you one more technique. So let's get into that. Okay, I'm in a different, um, I'm at the end of Psalms here, and I just want to, I want to do a few more of these music notes, but I'm going to show you how to just draw directly with these and then activate them. If you're not comfortable drawing directly with these, by all means, get a picture like we did here, get a picture of music notes, trace them, and then color them. Just want to show you how easy it is to play with these. So I'm... Um, just going to do very scribbly music notes here. Just want to show you how much fun this is. Just um, playing with your pencils. See if I can do one of those. I haven't done one of those in a while, so that goes up and down. Okay. Alright, so now I'm just going to take 
So now I'm going to just activate it a little bit and leave some of the scribbly lines. And this is obviously not a technique that just anyone is going to like. You might not like the look of it, but it just shows you the versatility of the pencils. If you don't activate it completely, you're going to still see the scribbly lines where you drew with those. That's how I did the, that mountain that I did. I showed you in the beginning of the movie. As I just played with my pencils, drew a mountain. Mountain is easy to draw. And activated it. Okay. Um, let's do a few smaller ones. That's not the way a note goes, but that's okay. This is just... The idea of notes. Swiping on my paper. And then once these are dry, what you can go and do is take your micron pen and you can go and scribble over that, which will give it like a whole new dimension. So I'm just going to um, show you on a few of these because I do want to write on this page. You just do that. Gives the it gives the music note a whole different vibe. Okay, so over here I want to write a prayer. That's what's nice about the watercolor pencils. You can write straight over it. You see, Bible journaling doesn't have to be like a full on page with sixty layers and half your craft room. Just a little bit like this. Write down your prayer. Date your page. That's it because you've spent time meditating on what you were reading. Okay, so enjoy your watercolor pencils. Um, enjoy doing very basic little pages. And um, I'll see you in the next video.